Hello and welcome to this afternoon's webinar on Meridian's Personnel Management Kiosk. My name is Melissa Harward and I'm our Marketing Coordinator here at Meridian. Also on the panel today from Meridian is Paul Burden, our Director of Software, and Dominic Adeville, our Industrial Designer. So to start off, just a little bit about Meridian. Meridian is a fully integrated manufacturer of indoor and outdoor kiosks, interactive digital signage, and self-service software. We develop all of our products and services under one roof, which provides us with greater efficiency and lean, high-quality results. We design, engineer, manufacture, and integrate all of our hardware and software solutions in-house. At our Aberdeen, North Carolina headquarters, we have a full-scale production facility, a 13-acre manufacturing campus, a full metal fabrication facility, and we are ISO 9001 2015 and UL self-certified facility. We're experts in ADA, FCC, and HIPAA compliance, and we have a full software development department that sits in our Mississauga, Ontario, Canada office. So diving into the hardware behind the personnel management kiosk. Meridian's personnel management solution is designed to help protect the health and safety of both employees and guests by preventing anyone with a, an elevated temperature or those without access from entering a facility. The image on the right hand side of your screen is the pedestal or freestanding version of the personnel management kiosk. Some of the features of the kiosk include temperature verification capabilities, facial identification, temperature threshold alarms, and it comes in an anodized aluminum finish with an optional antimicrobial powder coat, and it's currently available in pedestal and countertop configurations. So as I mentioned on the last slide, this is the pedestal configuration. The pedestal offers a two-sided design, so the side that you see on the screen currently is a rounded side and the opposite side of the pedestal is flat. The head unit is on a swivel um, so whichever side you prefer is the side that you can have facing out. On the right hand side of your, your screen you'll see an option with the graphics. These graphic templates are available to download and customize from our website and if graphics are an option that you're interested in we can connect you with some of our graphics partners across the country. Next up is our countertop option. So you'll see the design is very similar to the pedestal option. It's just shorter and designed for use on a countertop. Um, also similarly, it offers a rounded front or a flat side, um, double-sided unit that you are able to choose the side that you prefer best. Graphics are also available with the countertop option as well. Diving into the software aspect of the personnel management kiosk, each personnel management kiosk comes equipped with a custom built board level software solution already installed on the unit. Some of those features of the board level software include LAN or Wi Fi connectivity, FCC and CE certification, a 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit temperature variance, the ability to recognize up to 30,000 faces and the ability to integrate voice prompts. A little bit more on that board level solution. So the screen grab that you'll see on the left-hand side of your screen is the temperature settings on the personnel management kiosk itself. So some of the options that you're able to utilize are a body temperature test, which allows you to disable the temperature reading feature on the kiosk, a compensation temperature calibration, which offsets the red temperature and allows you to calibrate the unit according to environmental changes. An alarm threshold, which can be in degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit, and is the value at which the alarm is triggered. A body temperature alarm that dictates whether or not an alarm will sound when a user passes the temperature threshold. Mask detection, which allows you to turn on or off the mask detection feature. When users come in without wearing a mask, they'll be denied entry, even if they are at a normal temperature. Stranger mode, which um, 
can deny or allow access to strangers. If stranger mode is off, strangers are denied access. If stranger mode is on, strangers who pass the temperature threshold test are allowed access. On the next screen, this is what um, the employee database looks like. So employees or other approved visitors can be easily added to the FACE database on the device in a matter of seconds. Each personnel management kiosk comes equipped with a keyboard and mouse. Um, as the solution is not a touchscreen device, these are required to enter employees' names, type, expiration date, um, and their relevant information. These are examples of employees that we have at our facility. So you'll see their name, the type. For instance, uh, all of these are permanent employees, so their staff and their expiration date is forever. It also includes their picture that was taken at the device itself. So now that we've gone over the board level solution, um, we'll highlight M0 Manage. M0 Manage is Meridian's remote management software. Um, this has been in our software offerings for a number of years, but it's currently in development to be specifically used with a personnel management kiosk. Uh, it's not currently available, but it's set to be available sometime this summer as it's currently in development. M0 Manage is designed to allow you to monitor multiple kiosks at one time. So if you were to deploy more than one personnel management kiosks, you would be able to pull reports all from one location. Some of the features of the PMK specific version of M0 Manage include the ability to add and edit a list of employees, import a list of employees, and pull reports on the classic M0 Manage user interface. So that is that concludes our summary of the unit itself. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit those now and our panel will address them as they come in. The first question asks, for longtime employees who are let go, is there a setting to remove users or set them as strangers again? Yeah, you, uh, if you have a standalone device, uh, you can go in and just simply remove them. If you have uh, the M0 Manage Central dashboard, you can also uh, delete the employee and it would be removed from all the devices. They'd be recognized as a guest. Also, I believe available at lunch will have a, a ban list as well. So if you want to block somebody from entering the facility, it would uh, recognize them and record the attempt and the name at the time that were banned. So that'll be a feature that's available at launch. Next question asks, what is the encryption type for M0 Manage? M0 Manage will have encryption in transport of TLS 1.3. And uh, the database uh, encryption at rest will be uh, PostgreSQL's native uh, encryption that we'll have in the database. Next question asks, can you speak to any direct integration with Gentech's security system? Uh, I can't, I'm not familiar with the details of that system, but I'll mention where the integrations are possible. Uh, if it's a traditional building access solution, it probably supports Wigand pigtail connectors, which is the standard, universal standard for building security. So you could connect that to existing door controllers or similar security system devices. So that's one way. Uh, another way is an adapter. There might be an, a Wigand bridge into that solution that you could potentially attach to the system. You'd have to evaluate if that actually works. And the third way would be uh, to do a programming interface uh, with the Meridian's with Meridian's M0 management solution, you can uh, use the uh, REST interfaces that will be available at launch to uh, integrate those systems together. So you can add, edit, manage, delete employees programmatically, as well as access access logs and history for all the devices on your network and synchronize them. So that's the second way 
of, of integration. Uh, I think I forgot one, which was the physical connections of the relay. There's a relay that is available in the physical device that uh, could also attach to things like gates and doors to trigger those systems. So if it supports that, that's also an integration possibility. Next question asks, is the elevated temperature camera NDAA compliant? Yeah, the NDAA is typically the US blacklist uh, uh, and there's a specific group of companies that are a part of that. Uh, I don't believe any technology in our solution is, is of that list for the cameras. So uh, if that's your question, then it's uh, compliant in that way. Next question asks, how do you upload employee information, name, ID, picture, etc.? Is there an import function or does it have to be one by one from the kiosk? If you have the standalone version, it has to be one by one at the kiosk. So you would uh, go through a training process where you would have the employee with you and uh, you, you enter the password screen and then click the employee database and take the photo. The process takes about, about a minute per employee. So you have to enter the name, take the photo, and into the employee number uh, with the central M0 manage, we will have a bulk import feature. So you can import, if you have uh, appropriate photos of your existing employees, you can import photos and a flat file with all the employee names. And uh, this has the added benefit of synchronizing all the units with the same database all at once, if you have multiple units. Next question asks, what is the storage capacity? It's a six gigabyte disk in the device for storage of uh, employees. Employee database can hold about uh, 30,000 records. And one gigabyte of entry data. Next question asks, does the equipment have to be calibrated at some frequency? If so, how is that accomplished? You can, uh, what we recommend is that you, uh, from time to time, compare with another FDA approved device, a thermometer, um, to see if the results are comparable. Um, you shouldn't necessarily need to do that unless you're operating near the temperature extremes of uh, the operation. So it's very hot or very cold in your environment it's more likely to require um, an adjustment uh, of the temperatures, which is available by software. So you would uh, use the other device to determine what the offset is and save that in the, the temperature. But you shouldn't have to do that if you're at normal room temperatures. Next question asks, can you add screening questions to the device? We cannot, but uh, we will be providing that feature in an upcoming uh, it's a different hardware device from our Android PMK solution so we'll be launching a Windows version of the PMK it will have a touchscreen and far more possibilities for uh, input contactless input and questionnaires and, and, and all kinds of uh, different features uh, in it so um, we'll release more information closer to the availability of that product. Next question asks, if we have more than one kiosk, can you manage the devices and information from the web browser? Yeah, so M0 Manage is a subscription service that you can subscribe to, and your kiosk can connect there. We'll aggregate all of the entry information and share a single database between those units. So you can manage them centrally. It is accessed through a web browser. So you log in with a username and password and you'd be able to see the database and see the data uh, uh, of the entry scans and, and the photos and the temperatures and all the scan history information from that web browser access. Next question asks, does the software integrate with other ID software? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, there's the APIs in our M0 Manage, as well as uh, the Wigand connectivity, 
the physical wires that come out of the device is a standard for security integration. So it could be through either of those two methods. Next question asks, do the units have batteries or do they require power 100% of the time? So I believe we're working on a battery version of the unit. Uh, and when that's available, we'll have uh, launch information. Uh, we are prioritizing the non-battery version because of the demand. And uh, it does require uh, continuous power in order to operate. Next question asks, what about facial hair for men or glasses, sunglasses, or a mask? Does it recognize enough of the face to allow entry? Yeah, the minimum amount of uh, face information is uh, the features of the eyes and the bridge of the nose. So when you're wearing a mask, most of the face is obscured. It slows down uh, the speed at which the face is recognized when you're wearing a mask. Uh, so it does also decrease by percentages, uh, maybe 10 or, or 20 percent the accuracy uh, of uh, of when you're wearing a mask. So uh, the possibility of misidentification increases slightly, um, but uh, it will still operate um, with face recognition even in the mask scenario if you're recognizing employees. And uh, you only need to you only need to see the eyes and uh, facial hair uh, that shouldn't have any impact. Uh, eyeglasses that does not have any impact either because it it measures the uh, facial features behind the glasses, not not the glasses themselves. Next question asks, is the dry contact for the user a normally open or closed contact? It's normally open, so it only closes or makes the circuit connect, uh, providing continuity when there's a successful scan. So that's that could trigger a door opening if you put a voltage or a signal through that through that uh, dry contact. Next question asks, do they share a database or do you have to put, put the employee information on both devices? If you have two standalone devices, you'd have to put the employee information on both devices. If you have M0 managed subscription service, it will sync, allow you to synchronize between the two devices. Next question asks, can you connect the devices with an interface for automated door entry? For example, the door opens only upon recognition. Yes, yeah, so that was the relay that I just mentioned. So that normally normally open relay, so it's a two wire output that is at the base of the unit. And you can connect that to something like a door lock or a gate. And when the conic, when the scan is is passed, it will open that relay for by default three seconds, and that could trigger a door unlock or a gate opening. Uh, most software, most hardware for gates and door access have some sort of uh, dry contact interface that is supported. So uh, you should be able to find um, solutions that uh, work with that. Next question asks, do you have an open API? M0 Manage will supply an API, so all customers of M0 Manage will be able to uh, access the API, but it requires that uh, subscription. It's a SaaS service. Uh, we'll also be offering on-premises versions of that, probably 30 to 40 days after the launch of the hosted services. And if you have the on-premises solution, there would be APIs there as well. Next question asks, can you customize the graphics on the polls to be a company logo or banner? Yes, those graphics can be customized. Um, the templates can be downloaded from our website in the resources section of the personnel management kiosk page. Next question asks, is there a way for the system to notify admin users if there is an abnormal temperature via text or email? Yeah, so the standalone units uh, will not, but if 
you have the M0 managed subscription, it will allow you to receive uh, notifications. Uh, one is through the browser, so you would be able to allow the browser to notify you at your desktop or your mobile device. Uh, you can also receive notifications by email, and uh, we will shortly follow up with the release with SMS support. Next question asks, what is included in the version that is not standalone? So I'm assuming they're asking what is included with M0 Manage. Yeah, that's included with M0 Manage. Next question asks, can you add criteria to the system for monitoring? Yeah, you can add M0 Manage. So if you didn't have that, uh, it was a standalone system up front, you can add that uh, later. Next question asks, when is M0 Manage going to be launched? It's going to be this summer. We don't have an exact date, but we will publish a new date very shortly. Next question asks, with this kiosk being outside our main employee entrance, will direct sunlight affect the functionality of the temperature scan? Yeah, so it's an indoor unit, so we don't recommend putting it outside. It doesn't have any IP rating. And yes, direct sunlight will interfere with the camera. So uh, it's for use indoors. Um, I think some of our customers have temporarily wheeled it outside and, and used it, and it, it may work on that, but it has to be very sheltered and no direct sunlight. Uh, you'd have to bring it in, can't get any water on it at all, so if, uh, if exposed to the elements. Next question asks, can multiple kiosks be used on a single database so employees can use different points of entry? Yeah, so M0 Manage uh, centralizes your employee database. So if you subscribe, then all your kiosks are connected to it. Then any any edits you make on the main database will propagate uh, to the um, to the uh, all the kiosks that are attached or configured to connect to the server. Next question asks, what is the subscription price of the software? So M0 Manage is $295 per kiosk per year. But um, like we mentioned earlier, it is it is still in development, so it is not currently available to be purchased. Next question asks, when is the estimated time of release of the Windows device? Uh, end of next month. Next question asks, how easy will it be to transition from the Android version to the Windows version? Well, the these versions are hardware specific. So um, we use uh, an embedded Android ARM based chip uh, in the devices, but you will be able to purchase alternative hardware if you're looking to add more units. Um, so it'll be a different uh, operating based on the Intel architecture which is an i5. Next question asks, with M0 Manage, are you able to schedule or auto-send daily reports? Yeah, um, you'd be able to log into the dashboard to uh, access any reports there. Um, if you want to automate or export, you can use our APIs to integrate it with your systems to pull in data. Uh, once you're logged in, you'll be able to click an export button, but uh, you'd have to do that on request. Next question asks, are you planning integrations with payroll systems? Uh, again, uh, the API is available um, for integration with third-party systems, so you could use those APIs to uh, integrate with such payroll systems. 
Next question asks, is there any data collection done in the background for admin users to view? Yeah, so in the standalone version, you'll be able to access an entry report. So you'll be able to see uh, the entry records on the device itself, or if you were a managed subscriber, it'd be centrally located. And it looks like our final, oh, no, we just had another one come in. Next question is, is M0 Manage web-based? Yes, it's web-based. Yeah, so the, the portal you browse by uh, going to a specific URL, which will be personnel.meridiankiosk.com when launched. Next question asks, what would be required to connect the device to door locks? You can uh, use either the dry contact relay or the... Um, or the WAGAND interface uh, to connect it to door lock. So it outputs WAGAND's 24-bit or 32-bit. And if you have a door controller, it's configured appropriately, the WAGAND interface would work. And the relay or dry contact relay that I mentioned earlier in the call could also be used to open the door. All right, and it looks like that was our final question of the webinar. Um, thank you to all of our attendees for being here. A recorded copy of the entire webinar will be emailed to you two hours after the webinar. And thank you to our Meridian panel for being here as well. Have a great rest of your afternoon.